Hi, I'm Nick Hodge. We'll be talking about an open source project he's been working on on the new Windows 7 phone called MaTweets. Thanks, James. So, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Nick Hodge. Uh, so, firstly, I'd like to say keep calm and carry on. Um, I'm wearing the T-shirt as well. Um, why am I saying this? Uh, I've got no idea. Um, so Microsoft at a, uh, a FOSS conference, you know, what the fuck's going on? Whoops, sorry, this is being recorded. Um, uh, whatever. Uh, if anyone's offended by that, uh, sbarmer at microsoft.com. Um, so is it sort of like cats and dogs working together? You know, sort of. It sort of is, because let me just say, you know, back to the keep calm and carry on, is I'm not here to t say, you know, the Windows Phone 7 is the wonderful, most open source based platform thingamadoodad. I'm here to more talk about is if one of your customers or clients comes along and says, hey, uh, we've got a, we, we want to do some stuff on a phone, we're doing it on iPhone, we're doing it on Android, we're doing it on all these other platforms, and Windows Phone 7 ends in the list, you've got a couple of choices. You've got a choice to say, no, I'm not going to do it, uh, and then someone else will go do it and earn some money off of it, or you can say, yeah, I'm, I, I think I can go do that for you. This, this, the, the idea here is just give you an idea of what that world looks like. Uh, from an open source perspective, so that you can sort of say whether you do, are or aren't going to do that project. Um, and that's essentially the, the reason for being here. No other reason to you know, try and promote or sell or anything uh, as far as that's concerned. So the first thing is, is that uh, I just want to also frame this correctly is from a marketplace perspective is that you can publish, publish into the Windows Phone 7 marketplace. So uh, on, your, on the phone, you know, when you're in there, there's one of the one of the tiles is uh, marketplace. You click on that and you know publish your app in that. Uh, you can publish free as in beer apps, so apps that are zero dollar value, so people can buy them without actually transacting any money. Uh, you can also publish GPL v2 apps, um, which I found quite surprising. Um, uh, and again, you can charge uh, zero dollars for them, or you can charge a dollar value for them. That that choice is the publishers. Uh, the upper limit is US five hundred or four ninety nine four hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. If you wish to do that, um, I'm not saying you should publish GPLv2 apps, but that's the price range, you know, from ninety nine cents to that for any any app. And of course, permissive style licenses, Apache license, Microsoft uh, MSPL, uh, BSD sort of licenses are, are allowed as well. Um, the reason why I actually came to this point was um, a few, uh, about a week or two ago, because um, I published my blog on, on Linux on uh, WordPress uh, on DreamHost somewhere in the US, um, and uh, therefore I thought, hey, it'd be cool to get a, an admin app, and I know that those exist for, for iPhone and, uh, and for... Um, Probably for Android, but I haven't looked. But and uh, they published in the marketplace their app. So you know, zero dollars. Yep, easy install. Buy it, put it on my phone. Um, and then one of the first dialog boxes that comes up is saying you got to agree to the GPL v2 license agreement. So after calling Microsoft's lawyers uh, uh, and uh, having a three-hour no, it didn't have to do that. Uh, it, I, I said yep, okay with this. And then I did some internal email saying what the you know I, what's going on here, and, and V2 is, is is allowed, which I found quite surprising, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so again, if you're working on a project and you're going to publish under that license, just be aware that you can do that with the the uh, Windows Phone Store. Um, so why am I here? Why am I talking about this? Um, the main reason is that I work on a couple of open source projects on the Windows platform, not so much in the in the uh, on Linux. Um, Although I've used Linux for 25 plus odd years, um, but you know I work on two projects. So, uh, MyTweets is a desktop application uh, licensed uh, under the Microsoft permissive license, uh, and also MyTweets for uh, Windows Phone 7. It's essentially a social media client. It does Facebook, uh, uh, Foursquare, Twitter uh, check-ins. It does all the picture stuff. It does other cool things, and it's it's sort of you know about four or five blokes in a sh who uh, don't live in the same shed, but we live in our sheds across Australia, and we just like cutting code sort of part time and publish it open source, and people can download it and play with it and tweak it and fork it and do whatever they like really. Um, so the particular parts that uh, I've added to my tweets on the desktop stuff is the uh, scripting component, which added uh, Python and Ruby script as a scripting environment into the desktop app, uh, and implemented the Haversign formula, which is a way of calculating the distance between two points on a curve, um, which is used for geo 
location, measure, measuring the distance. So you can say, if I'm at this geo point and someone else is that geo point, what is the physical distance between, uh, between us? So I implemented that in both the desktop and the uh, phone version. So if you uh, are, are, are tasked with a project, um, you're going to be a little bit of a stranger in a strange land um, in that uh, you know, the Microsoft open source system, is there such a thing? Um, yes, there is. There's a lot of, uh, many of our core, uh, many of our, um, I shouldn't say our, but many devs who make their money uh, in the, certainly in the, even in the higher end of the Microsoft open source world, do spend a lot of their after hours time enjoying hacking on code and publishing it open source. Uh, and three, three out of the for no, three out of the, the the core team actually you know get paid money to do uh, coding on Microsoft platforms during the day, and then they you know come home at night or wherever at night and hack on open source code and publish it as well. Um, they just love code, so it's just no different to to the the, uh, the 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 FOSS world in any way, shape, or form. It's just getting connected to that world is probably a little different. Um, I'm just going to big shout out thanks to Mindscape, which is a New Zealand company, uh, Resharper. Um, both of those are dev tool sort of things for in the Microsoft world. Uh, but Atlassian, um, who are really cool supporters of open source, uh, we use FishEye um, and Jira in our, as uh, FishEye to give you a, a, vis a visual, uh, a view of our projects and Jira as our, our man case management system, um, which is pretty cool. So uh, thanks to Atlassian for supporting the open source world um, as well, and we use it. Okay, so two examples, uh, WordPress for Word, uh, Windows Phone 7, it's GPLv2, um, and uh, another little cool thing that uh, popped up recently, um, which sort of tied into what uh, Steve was talking about earlier, is uh, a thing that allows you to run Ruby on your Windows Phone 7, so you can actually have run Ruby and play it on your, you know, and, and, and write code on your Windows Phone 7. Um, I don't know why you'd do that, maybe, you know, the Ruby Scientologists will use it and find it fun, I don't know, but you can. Okay, so also from a phone perspective, we're not talking about Windows Phone 6.5 and earlier, which looks like this. Um, no, not quite, but yeah, I think you get the idea. It's actually a steampunk thing that was on Epic Win uh, earlier today. Um, is uh, is the, the user experience on Windows Phone is a little different, uh, and I suppose the uh, the reason for that is to, to differentiate ourselves, uh, different, Microsoft differenti differentiate itself. Um, and really, the, it, when you're coming from a dev perspective, um, and I'll talk about the web stuff a little later. You've got really got two sort of choices to make. Uh, you, if you're building apps that are static image, uh, maybe a bit of animation, text, maps, and those sorts of things, UI, traditional UI sort of stuff, um, uh, we have a full sil we have Silverlight built in into the phone. So you build stuff in .NET and run it in uh, Silverlight. Um, the other thing from a gaming perspective is uh, one of the things that we have in the Microsoft sort of ecosystem is um, XNA, which allows you to uh, build sort of, it's sort of a couple of layers above DirectX, uh, allows you to build um, 3D based apps that run on Xbox and desktop, but also on the phone. Um, and uh, that uh, is, if you're doing gaming stuff, is probably where you're going to go. So, for instance, um, uh, Fruit Ninja, uh, which is um, Brisbane built um, and published as part of the Microsoft Studios, is an XNA-based game. More than likely, however, if you're tasked to do uh, or you're thinking of doing a uh, Windows Phone 7 app, you're probably going to be looking down the, the Silverlight path. And I'll give you a look at the tool chain in just a moment. Um, the code, uh, sorry, the uh, developer tools are free as in beer. Um, that is, you can go and download them, install them um, from uh, developer.windowsphone.com. Uh, that will give you both the compiler and the UI builder. Um, you do not need to pay money for that. Um, because you all the packaging stuff and those sorts of things. So um, that is uh, zero cost. A couple of little points. Um, it does, obviously you need to bring your own Windows. Um, it, this is, works on Windows, it's, so for those of you who are on Mac OS or, or you know, some variant of Linux, you're gonna to need to run Windows. The little bit of a point as well is that the current, as I, in reading some of the forums, the current um, builds don't really like working in virtual machines. Um, should be okay for your bootcamp style Macs to boot into it, but your VirtualBox style environments are probably going to have a little bit of an issue just at the moment. Um, I don't know why, it's just some of the stuff that I've been seeing uh, reported up. So just a little bit of a heads up if you are doing this from your, from your hardware perspective. 
so it's all the stuff's there to do your UI stuff and connect it to the network and all those sorts of things. In fact, on that note, uh, whilst the, earlier today, because I'm obviously not going to be a major customer of Nokia phones, um, I decided to ha hack on some code. Uh, and James uh, showed earlier the uh, planning alerts, which is a, a standard RSS service that you can go and you put in a postcode and you get back a geo-tagged, RS, RSS geo-tagged feed of things in that postcode that have got planning alerts. And you can also do it by lap longs and a few, and a few other things as well. So I um, uh, quickly uh, hacked up a little app in uh, Visual Studio. I'm using the full version of Visual Studio here because I don't have to pay for it. Uh, but if you're getting the free version, you can just go get it. Uh, the UI builder stuff um, is uh, XML. So you, uh, Silverlight, just done, you know, forgetting all the crap on top of it, is just basically XML to describe the UI. Um, and the language underneath is either uh, C Sharp or now VB if you want to do that, or F Sharp. If you want to program in a functional language on a phone, we actually permit that as well. Uh, let's not, instead of doing this on the device, let's do this in the emulator. The emulator is quite, um, is, uh, it comes in built like most of the emulators you get for when you're doing this sort of dev um, work. Um, it's, you know, in, uh, you can do things like uh, just come in here into, into your uh, developer environment and pause it on probably in some, uh, some binary there that I've incorporated, but let's just continue and play that. Uh, so somewhere near my home to search for planning alerts, somewhere near there, uh, scrolling, uh, what's going on in El McPherson Street. Sadly, no El McPherson. Um, so, you know, and we have you know, maps control and that sort of thing, uh, which I've just incorporated into that. So it's all, you know, I packed that together. Probably it took me about an hour or so to actually get to that particular point. Uh, MarTweets itself is, uh, again, published on, on CodePlex. You can, it's accessible via um, uh, Mercurial. Um, if you wanted to have a look at the source code, again, it's licensed under the Microsoft Permissive License, so you can do all sorts of weird, wonderful stuff with it. Uh, one of the things that I'll also point out from our ecosystem perspective, um, we talked about the tool chain, whoops, there a moment ago. I hate PowerPoint. Yeah, I, I generally you know, like to show more code, but uh, um, to register for the marketplace is US $99 a year. If you're a student and are signed up to the Microsoft Stream, DreamSpark program, that is $0. You also get the dev tools for free as well. Uh, you get five free submissions of free apps, um, so they, and then t they are $20 per submission after that because they are reviewed. Um, but if you provide an update to a pre-existing app, that will is, does not have to be reviewed, and that just gets uh, goes through the update system, and you get updates on the phone. Uh, if you're doing a revenue share perspective, just like the Apple Store, it's a 70% dev share. Um, there's a whole barrel load of uh, open source libraries that you have access to as well. Um, in the case of MarTweets, you use Fiber uh, for doing async. Um, uh, support. There's a lot of async stuff you expect to do on the web. Uh, we use uh, model view, view model light um, from a, separating the UI from the, the base code stuff. Uh, hammock for doing REST style stuff. Um, Autofact for uh, dependency injection and, and inversion of control sort of stuff. And uh, in the case of Fiber, MVVM light, and no, in the Fiber, uh, MVVM light, yes, and Autofact, they're actually done by Australian devs um, and in, in, uh, in, the, in uh, either CodePlex or in, in, auto, in the case of Autofact with uh, Nick from Brisbane here in Google Code uh, as, as a source. Um, we also we use a Microsoft library, uh, the Silverlight uh, Toolkit, which is actually licensed MSPL. A lot of the stuff that Microsoft ships um, that you can use that you know, again, doesn't isn't sold is generally um, much easier to find open source and codeplex, and it's uh, quite easy to get into. So, Mercurial, go get it. Uh, you can go and uh, try it. We are not in the store at the moment, mainly because um, it's been Christmas, and we don't really give us stuff about doing too much coding, or at least because we all get to run on our own phones. We can just download it to our phones and run it. So. And we're not making any money out of it, so we're just having a bit of fun. Hopefully, it gives you a bit of an update, gives you a bit of a heads up if you if you're asked to do that sort of stuff, so you can give a go, no go. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Have you got any questions? I've got one. Can you install applications on a Windows 7 phone outside the market? Uh, so, can you install a phone? Yeah, if you dev unlock your phone, yes, you can. 
So the, they get bundled up as a .xap file. If you dev unlock the phone, that is you're a registered developer, you can actually push stuff down to it and, and run it. However, one of the other things that uh, is happening in the, at the moment is there's a project called Chevron which is doing allowing hobbyists and ha hackers and tinkerers to do cool things with their phone. Um, but we can't talk, the guys who have worked on that uh, to do what's technically called side loading uh, have been, uh, there's sort of, I'll talk about offline, a bit of shenanigans, but uh, generally, yeah, one, we do wish to do it, evidently. Do more of that. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Any... Yeah, so I didn't really, I'm not, uh, I love mono, love Moonlight, so, you know, uh, in terms of on the phone, there's really no need because Silverlight is the, the parent of Moonlight and you know, .NET's on there. In the case of other, other, you know, the Android platform and the iPhone stuff, the mono touch and that sort of stuff, I really haven't used, I'm not really the expert in that sort of stuff, um, but it's really cool. It's perfectly valid and, you know. Gets the, 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 if you want a thumbs up, I'll give you a thumbs up. And, that's, and if you want a more official and Microsoft thumbs up, you can go to the website and have a look at our community promise and all that stuff. But I didn't want to come here and preach and get into religious wars because I just hack on code. Okay, okay thank you. Much.